This is a quick video over stall charts for steam heat exchangers. So let's first start off with a simple basic understanding of a plane frame and we're going to use this to then draw out our stall chart. So let's say we have a cold fluid coming into our plane frame at a max flow rate of 100 gallons per minute at 50 degrees Fahrenheit and is discharging at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The plate and frame is designed so that if you were to have your control valve open at 100% open, so it's 100% open, you have minimum pressure drop across that control valve, you have 100 PSIG of steam coming into that plate and frame. That, that's kind of the idea. You have 100, 100 PSIG of steam in there, and with that 100 PSIG of steam, you're going to heat up your fluid. Now that steam will come in, condense, travel through a steam trap, and then go into a condensate line. We're going to assume that the condensate discharge pressure is 5 psi. So on the end of the end of the steam trap, the discharge of the steam trap is at 5 psig. Now a star a stall chart is helpful in determining at what duty heat duty will your system stall at. So let's say you have your system now only have 50 gallons per minute of fluid coming in. It's still going to come in at 50 degrees and discharge at 200. How much steam pressure do you need to get your heat transfer? Well, the only way to change your heat duty is to change the temperature difference, and the temperature difference is the temperature of the steam side versus the temperature of your product side. So the only way to get half the heat duty well, you're not going to change the heat transfer coefficient. You're not going to change the area. So therefore, you must change the temperature difference. And to change the temperature difference, the only way you can do that is by changing the amount of pressure that is that is on the steam side. Because when you decrease the, the steam pressure, you decrease the steam temperature. And thus, you get a temperature difference lower than, than you had before. So you might think, OK. I have 100 psig. I need half the half the heat, so then I only need 50 psig of steam. That's not the case. So let's look at a stall chart and understand why that is not the case. So here are the conditions down here. The design pressure at 100% load is 100 psig. Inlet feed temperature is 50. Outlet feed temperature is 200. Product mean temperature. That's the temperature average for your inland outlet, so that's that's 125, that's just the average temperature of your product inside your heat exchanger. And the heat exchanger temperature difference, that's the temperature difference between your steam and your product at a 100% load. And then you have your condensate discharge pressure, which is at 5 psig. So if we know the pressure of steam, we know the temperature that that steam is at also. So that's what's kind of nice. This side is the temperature, and this side is the pressure. And these lines correlate the temperature and pressure. So if you go over here, right here, this correlates to 120 degrees all the way across, but it also correlates to a vacuum. So let's actually do something better. Let's say we have 180 degree, uh, sorry, not degree, 180 PSIG of steam. That correlates to 380 degrees Fahrenheit of steam. If we were to go to maybe say 34 PSIG of steam, that correlates to 280 degrees Fahrenheit of steam. So the system is designed to run at 100 PSIG when you're at 100% load. That correlates to 338 degrees Fahrenheit right there, 338 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the temperature of the steam. So your steam temperature is right here as you decrease your load. So basically when you go across the graph, you have this part right down here. This is your system load. So right here is 100%. So when you're at 100%, you need your steam to be at 338 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see the problem. When your condensate pressure is greater than your steam pressure, and in that case, that is right here, at a load of 48%, you don't have enough pressure to push your condensate out of your, your heat exchanger. It has stalled and is no longer moving. So with that known, we now know how to find stall conditions. 
Now let's say instead of saying our our system changes, let's say our inlet feed temperature changes instead of our flow rate changes. Let's say we have product coming in at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if we run the calculations, we get stall at 51%. Or let's say we have a heat exchanger that's designed for a 100% load at 50 PSIG. So again, at 100% load, our system is designed to have 300 degree Fahrenheit steam, again, at 100% load. So we then get stall at 62% load. And again, the load is, it is dependent upon what your product temperature coming in is and the uh, flow rate of your product. So that is a basic rundown of how to find the stall conditions for a steam heat exchanger. This Excel file is available for anybody to use. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.